This is Five on Your Side at Noon, focused on you. New at noon, there's good news for residents in Alton. Gordon Moore Park will reopen Friday. The mayor just updated us on the investigation into what caused this giant sinkhole. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. A mine under the park collapsed in late June because it happened in the early morning hours. No one was on the field. No one was hurt. Five on your side's Tracy Hinson was at a news conference with the mayor just hours ago where he made the announcement. Tracy, will the entire park reopen Friday? A good chunk of it, Kay. So naturally, of course, the soccer fields behind me will remain closed as that sinkhole has expanded, which was expected. And then ballpark one will actually stay closed. It's kind of kitty quarter kitty corner to the soccer fields. The road in between the ballpark and the soccer fields, though, that will be open. Now, the current hole is now double to triple the size of the initial subsidence, an estimated 200 to 230 feet, according to the city of Alton's contracted engineers. There is no timeline for New Frontier Materials who mines under the park to repair the field. Additional testing needs to be done in the area. As to what caused the collapse, Justin Kleinschmidt with Shepard, Morgan and Schwab engineers explains. It's just an anomaly um, where millions and millions of years ago when that rock was uh, put in place and formed, uh, there's just, you know, there was a little void there that uh, didn't have any rock in it. And that's what caused the, the collapse is what they're uh, expecting. But the they he is referring to there is New Frontier Materials, who has the lease to mine under the park. Now, some good news for golfers. It's been closed for almost 50 days, but the golf course is reopening here. The first tee times you can, bo you can book open on Saturday. And Tracy, I know you said there's no timeline for when those repairs can begin, but is there sort of a general feeling when it might be complete? So we're told that there still needs to be some additional testing of the sinkhole itself behind me. Then the engineer was telling us he has an idea of what they can do, but he said it'll be up to New Frontier Materials to actually come up with a plan to repair the field. He said what they usually do would be to fill it all in and then make sure that ground is stable underneath. A process that, at least to a not engineer like myself, sounds like it'll be some time. All right, thank you, Tracy. All right, weather impact forecast. Look at this. So Phelps County, lots of showers and storms, very heavy, but staying below severe limits, pushing into Phelps County. Looks like most of that's diving south. So that really is the only county that we're really keeping our eyes on right now. And uh, we'll go ahead and show you other areas here. So some showers are pushing in the St. Louis and O'Fallon. Uh, so a little bit of rain expected even around the metro, but those heavier showers and storms will stay to the south and west. And then you go further east, not much happening in Illinois right now. And most of this activity is dying out as it heads towards St. Louis. So that temperature 78 degrees and with those clouds moving in and even some rain showers, likely that temperature will be held down a bit until these rain showers break up and maybe we'll see a resurgence of those temperatures later this afternoon. A lot of clouds out there again today had some sunshine earlier, but coming up a weather impact alert day for the potential of strong to severe storms. I'll have much more on that and time out that chance of storms coming up in just a bit. OK, all right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Jim Ferguson. Police officer Travis Brown remains in a coma with a life threatening brain injury. He hit his head on the pavement as demonstrators charged him during a protest on Friday night. Hours ago, his family issued a statement asking the public for its continued prayers. Surveillance video and body cam footage of the incident were released to the public yesterday. The incident happened as people gathered outside the Ferguson Police Department to recognize the 10th anniversary of Michael Brown's death. It wasn't two people colliding. I mean, if you look at the video, the officer is standing there waiting to try to catch this guy. It wasn't a collision. He's standing there. This guy tackled my guy like he was a football player. Five people have been arrested, all face charges. Gant faces another assault charge for kicking a different officer in the head. Emily Davis charged with third degree assault. Derek Robinson, Philip March and Keith Rose all charged with property damage. Developing in central Illinois, the latest in the story surrounding Sangamon County Sheriff's Deputy Sean Grayson. He's charged with first degree murder, accused of shooting Sonia Massey in Springfield last month. 
Last night, the Sangamon County Board met for the first time since the details of her death were released to the public and the discussion got heated. Hannah Flahan has reaction. A community outraged. Sonia Massey deserved better. Do better. Do better. Do better. Period. The Sangamon County Board meeting is flooded with over 150 community members making their voices heard. Sorrow is just a platitude unless we, the people of Sangamon County, unified in our horror at the policing we paid for, do something to assure it's never to happen again. Community members are calling on each other to vote in the upcoming election and stand up for their beliefs. These laws matter just like Sonia's life mattered. They're calling for a reallocation of funds to different resources rather than police tech. I suggest allocating funding towards comprehensive de-escalation training, cultural competency programs, mental health crisis intervention, and community counseling so we, the people, can monitor our police. They're calling for investments into third-party training. But according to Sheriff Jack Campbell, uh, Sheriff Deputy Grayson is the only one who went against this protocol. This is just one of the reasons why we need a third party training. They're calling for investigations into the department. A complete third party investigation and audit of the department, jail, and all sheriff's department employees, including background reviews, to be released to the public upon completion. An immediate implementation of any changes recommended based upon the investigation and audit. Now is the time for drastic, impactful action. They're calling for more community stake in local politics and the addition of board member Canham's referendum to November's ballot. That was Hannah Flahan reporting. Grayson remains in jail today. Just last week, Sangamon County Sheriff Jack Campbell announced his retirement. Students in the St. Louis Public School District go back to class Monday. Today, school leaders are asking for unity. The school board met last night for the first time since placing Superintendent Keisha Scarlett on leave. The board president firmly stated she will not step down and she will continue to serve the students. The rest of the heated meeting centered around the new transportation policy. The board clarified that 6,400 students will use yellow buses, 6,200 students will use private rides, and 1,400 students will use public transportation. To help students adjust to mass transit, every student's family will get free day passes for the first day of school so they can familiarize themselves with the routes and if you're a commuter concerned about overcrowding during the school year, Metro says it will add buses into service if they have the staff. The school district must pay any extra service required on regular routes. If you live in Illinois, you'll soon be able to carry your driver's license on your phone. A new law signed this week allows digital versions of state identifications. Keep in mind the TSA, police, and some businesses may still require a physical ID card. That law goes into effect January 1st. Illinois joins 12 other states, including Missouri, that allow digital IDs. Still ahead, a plan to build a new road in Arnold will have a major impact on residents, why some may be forced to sell their homes. Plus, Instagram may not be doing its part to fight online abuse. Who's taking the brunt of it?